Good morning, Jaza. This was the wake-up call sent in by Israel. Everybody's pointing in this uh, this young woman in the red here. So we'll we'll start with you. And, and if you don't mind, introduce yourself. Wait for the microphone. The my microphone will be coming up. And all right. Hello, Mr. President. My name is Layla Abdelaziz. I'm a student at the University of South Florida. Hey, Layla. Uh oh, uh oh. Come First on, we, of all, we, we can all get along here. <laughs> Tampa, behave yourselves. All First right. of all, I'd like to say that I did work on your campaign. I think it's great what you did for the community because you involved us as the youth to understand the grassroots movement and That's what great. impact it can make. Thank you. My question is, um, last night in your State of the Union address, you spoke of America's support for human rights. Mm -hmm. Then, why have we not condemned Israel and Egypt's human rights violations against the occupied Palestinian people, and yet we continue to support financially with billions of dollars coming our from taxes. our tax our dollars? Taxes. Okay, now, now everybody's got to be courteous. Everybody's, everybody's answering the question. The, uh, let, let's, uh, <clears throat> let, let me just talk about the Middle East generally. Look. All right, everybody, come on, come on, hold on, hold on one second. I got to answer my question first, sir. Okay. I know you got what you got some beads on. Are those New Orleans beads? Okay. Look, look, look. Um, the Middle East is obviously an issue that has plagued the region for centuries. And it's an issue that elicits a lot of passions, as you heard. Uh, here's my view. Uh, Israel is one of our strongest allies. It has... Uh, hold, let, let me just let me play this out. Uh, it is a vibrant democracy. It shares links with us in all sorts of ways. It, it is critical for us, and I will never waver from ensuring Israel's security and helping them secure themselves in what is a very hostile region. So, so, I, so I make no apologies for that. What is also true is that the plight of the Palestinians is something that we have to pay attention to because it, it, it is not good for our security and it is not good for Israel's security. If you've got millions of individuals who feel hopeless, who don't have an opportunity to get an education or get a job or what have you. Now, uh, the history of there is long and I don't have time to go through the, the grievances of both sides in the issue. What I have said and what we did from the beginning when I came into office is to say we are seeking a two-state solution in which Israel and the Palestinians can live side by side in peace and security. In order to do that, both sides are going to have to make compromises. <clears throat> As a in or as a first step, the Palestinians have to unequivocally renounce violence and recognize Israel. And Israel, and Israel has to acknowledge legitimate grievances and interests of the Palestinians. We know what a solution could look like in the region, but here's the problem that we're confronting right now, is that both in Israel and within the Palestinian territories, uh, the politics are difficult. They're divided. Uh, the Israeli government uh, came in based on the support of a lot of folks who don't want to make a lot of concessions. I think uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is actually making some effort to try to uh, move a little bit further than his coalition wants him to go. On the other hand, 
President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority, who I think genuinely wants peace, has to deal with Hamas, an organization that has not recognized Israel and has not disavowed violence. And so we are working to try to strengthen the ability of both parties to sit down across the table and to begin serious negotiations. And I think that uh, it's important when we're talking about this issue to make sure that we don't just knee-jerk uh, use language that is inflammatory or in some fashion discourages the possibility of negotiation. We've got to recognize that uh, both the Palestinian people and Israelis have legitimate aspirations and they can be best served if the United States is helping them understand each other as opposed to demonizing each other. All right?